we go. Now we're now we're live. Take you two. Me to the Take other two. screen, and that screen was paused. Okay, good. Well, I didn't like the way I said that stuff, anyways. <laughs> Oh, right. well, we're officially live now, buddy. So go ahead. Okay, good. This is yeah. a new view because now the comments show up on the screen side for us. So that's kind of exciting. All right, we're live in MLO Net. This is another MLO Net success series. Today we're joined by our friend Carl White, industry advocate, friend to many of us, uh, certainly one of the leading minds on helping LOs build better systems, its structure, and uh, manage their lives and their day. Welcome, Carl. You, you forgot and Brad Pitt look-alike. I, I, oh, yeah. I, 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 I had a nickel every time I heard that. So uh, great to see you guys, man. Great to, great to be a part of your party here. Appreciate you yeah. being us. Join us. Yeah, this is, uh, this, this is really fun for us because, you know, there are certain folks that we, we look at and we kind of step back and go, man, this, is, this guy's like big time. And uh, I remember the first time TJ and I got on stage with Barry Habib, we were just like shell-shocked. So, you know, I feel like there's, there's a little bit of the stargazing going on. We're like, wow, we're talking to Carl. This is pretty cool. So. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to play that replay back to the lovely Mrs. White. Uh, she'll, uh, she'll get a kick out of that. So, so dude, <laughs> I, I love our topic today. It's like, uh, how, do we, uh, how do we transition from, uh, from, like, uh, uh, from a refi predominant market to a purchase predominant market? And man, we've all been through some ups and downs, you know, uh, before we hit the record button, TJ and I were talking about conversation we had back, uh, uh, you know, uh, before the, the, what we call the big crash, you know, back in 07 and 08. And, uh, you know, I, I find that those people like, you know, like you two guys, those people that can adapt will always play ahead. Those people that want to keep treating it like it's last year, man, they're, they're in for a rough ride. The only thing constant in the business has changed. I, I you know I say that a lot and I tell my team that a lot. And, um, and that's kind of what I think we want to focus on today. What are the, what are the changes that you need to make yourself? You can't really control what's going on outside of your windows, right? Yeah. Um, but you can't control what you do with the time that you're, you're clocked in and working. And, uh, you know, let's, let's just try to find some things that the loan officers could do, maybe learn from some of the folks that are in your program or yourself. I guess, you know, question one for me would just be, is it okay for the loan officers to still kind of call some of those refi customers and, and work that database, or should they just be spending all their time chasing realtors and going down that purchase path? Man, that, that's a great question. You know, it, it, and, and man, I don't mean to offend anybody because I'm, I'm an active branch manager myself, right? So, uh, so I, I'm putting myself into this category here. Um, Guys, we, we've all been order takers for the last year. Like, just being honest, like people pulled up to the drive-thru and, and we just asked, hey, would, would you like fries with that? And, and pretty much, just being honest, that's what a lot of us are doing. And I think now we're transitioning back to the way it always has been, or almost always has been, where we actually have to treat this like a business. You know, it's, uh, and, and put our, 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 our salesperson, salesman, salesperson, uh, hat on and, 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 and every, uh, know that everything's not just going to fall into our lap anymore. So for me, uh, Michael, I've always liked to have what I, I call the 70, 30 format, which what that means for me is I want 70% of my business to be purchased and I want 30% to be refi no matter what's going on. So like, let's say this last year where the refis were falling out, you know, just falling out of the sky, you know, pretty much for all of us, right? It, you didn't have to be much of a genius to be doing, you know, pretty, pretty good last year. Not, not for everybody, but for most people. But what, you know, during those times of high refinances, what, what I've always done is step up my game in the purchase during that period of time to keep that at 70, 30. And so if my 30 just goes up organically, that means I'm going to focus on my 70 and get that back up to 70. And the same thing, if I find, if I find my purchases at, at 80 and my refinance is at 20, then I know I need to focus on that activity for the refinances. And, and keep in mind that like, like, like you, you know, for me, most of our refinances have not been for rate and term, right? Most of our refinances have been for other situations like, like cash out refinances, debt consolidation, 
nobody likes to think of this, but you know, like divorce and, and all those other things. And so instead of just answering the phone call when our past database calls us, man, I would strongly recommend like right now, I would, I would grab my calendar. Like if you want a to-do list, action item number one, grab two hours, go in your calendar right now, tomorrow afternoon, one o'clock, spend two hours in your database, find eight people where refinancing would be a no-brainer for them. Either A, because they're at a higher rate and you just haven't touched base with them yet, or B, last time you wrote a loan, they had a history of, of having uh, rolling debt, you know, like jet skis and credit card debt and whatnot. Look to see if they have equity in their home that would support it and help them out with a, uh, with a cash refinance. And, and what that conversation, if I was to call uh, you, TJ, I'd say, hey, TJ, uh, uh, this is Carl. I helped you with your mortgage last time. Hey, just real quick, I, I know you might be busy right now. And we call this, if I could, you, would you? If I could, would you? Mm -hmm. Hey, if, if I could show you uh, how to uh, decrease your payment by somewhere around $347 a month, uh, would you give me 15 minutes to, to show you how we do that? Would that be okay? That's it. And so block two hours out of your calendar. Don't be in email. Don't be in Facebook. Um, turn all those distractions off. Focus on finding eight people in your, in your current uh, database. You'll end up funding probably like two to three of those eight and, and not a bad two hours to spend. So, you know, you know, which brings up another thing too, guys, is like, like, man, so we just finished a meeting uh, down here in Clearwater Beach, our mastermind uh, uh, meeting met, and uh, we got a little over 500 people in that group and uh, usually about half at any one given time show up to the mastermind meetings. So, you know, they were on vacation or this, you know, with the COVID going on, some people. I had, uh, I had seen your photos coming my way. The Sprague family kept sending me pictures of it all. And they're like, you yeah. should be here. I'm like, oh man, I hit you guys. I'm yeah, it, it was really cool. So we had uh, like 250 people showed up, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and it was really cool. But anyway, uh, one thing we were talking about is who says we have to focus on one or the other? Like some of these cats, and I, I wish I could remember who brought it up. I thought this was a great idea. I can't remember. I'd love to give credit where credit's due, but I can't remember who it was. But he said he has two totally separate teams uh, in, his, in his mortgage. Uh, uh, I'm going to say his mortgage business. He was, he's not the business owner. He's a, you know, a loan officer, you know, like, like, like most people that's watching this today. So he had one part of his assistants that did nothing but his purchase business. So they helped him call real estate agents. They helped him, uh, 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 you know, take those leads and applications. And once they get those leads and applications going, uh, calling the, uh, the borrower, the co-bar, the listing agent, the buying agent, giving them updates, asking, uh, can they count on them for the next buyer lead that they get? Like, you know, farming the business of the business that you're already doing. While he has another team in his mortgage practice, that's doing nothing but helping him market to his past database, looking for refinance opportunities. So, you know, the problem that a lot of us had last year, hey, I'm so busy with the refis, I don't have time for the realtors. Or other times, I'm so busy with the realtors, I don't have time for the refis. Do both, right? I, if I go to the Ford, they have cars and pickup trucks, right? And no matter which is selling the most of, they have two, like, like the Ford dealership that I go to up here, they have one side of the parking lot is the trucks and another side is the non-trucks. Two totally different sales teams. So, like a, a corollary question with that, something I found in my business, you know, when you have that team working the refinances, do you find, or, you know, this gentleman you're talking to or people on your own branches and teams, they find that working that database actually helps strengthen their purchase business because sometimes the people are selling or sometimes they have a purchase to refer you and now, you might have something to give back to an agent because you're actually working your database. Man, that's a great point. And, and I think that's the thing a lot of us forget, you know, is that, uh, is that when we farm our past database, it's not just for refis, it's for Uncle Bob, uh, uh, you know, is buying a house or, or my, in my case, my, my, uh, my daughter uh, and, and maybe even my son are both independently getting ready to, to buy a house. My daughter, I think in Myrtle Beach, my son uh, down in St. Pete Beach, separately. So if, if I was in somebody's past database, which I am, <laughs> right, there'd be, uh, there'd be two opportunities, not just refinance, but with the purchases of not mine, but of my kids. And so you make a great point there. Absolutely. So I see some loan officers, you know, they, and they kind of maybe didn't do what they should have done to build their purchase business. And all of a sudden, 
they're they're stressed out because they had been so refined dependent and now they're looking at like man i got one purchase in process i got 10 pre-approvals and none of them are flipping you know what should i do and they're asking all kinds of questions under the sun should i should i buy a lead should i go to this program should i go I mean, what what would you tell that person just you know taking away any of tj mike's opinions or, or you know what would carl tell that person that walks in the door today Great question. So first of all, and man, I hope, uh, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes here because I'm just going to just share openly. So I, don't, I, hope I, I hope I'm not being disrespectful. But man, the, the last thing I would do is ever buy leads. Like I would never, ever, ever buy leads. I would, I would learn how to create leads, not buy them. And it's easy enough to create them. I mean, my gosh, you know, with, with our, with our, uh, you really like, like that answer, by the way. Sponsored by buyalead.com. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think buying leads is a horrible idea. You know what? I've been doing this for a long, long time. And I have literally spoke literally to tens of thousands of loan officers across the nation. And you know what, guys, I have never once, like literally never once had somebody say, man, I got a great source we buy our leads from and we love this. We love this. Like never. I've never heard anybody say that. And the other thing about buying leads is if whoever's developing those leads, if they change something in their model and decide, oh, I don't know, they're going to open up their own mortgage company or, you know, or something like that. And your source of buying leads goes away, man, you're out of business. And I never liked the idea of, of having my lead source depend upon one other person. Now, when you go, well, wait a minute, Carl, referral partners is relying on somebody, and it is, but there's 20 of them or 30 of them or 10 of them or four of them or however many, you know, however large you want to grow your business. So it's not one source, it's, it's many sources. But like to, to buy leads uh, 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 from Zillow or something like that, man, I, I, I just, uh, I, I don't guess there's anything wrong with doing that but I'd certainly have other stuff going on in addition to that. Cause I, I, uh, I remember one time uh, we were getting some leads off of Google and man, it was working great. Like, and it really was, it was working great. Uh, this is back in Oh five, Oh six, something like that. And, uh, and then Google came out with this thing they called the Google slap. Mm -hmm. And what the Google slap was. Yeah. It was very painful. <laughs> it was, it was a, if I can say so, it was a bitch slap. I mean, it was painful, right? So literally overnight, Google said, okay, you can no longer have an opt-in form as the direct link on, on a Google search. And literally overnight, all the leads that we were going from that, gone. Literally overnight. Every day we'd, get, we'd wake up, we'd have 20, 30 people to be calling. And, we, and one morning we went and looked, dude, it was, it was nobody. And when I say nobody, nobody. So we went from 20, 30 leads a day of great leads that we were converting to zero with no warning, literally overnight. And I learned that day, I said, all right, I will never, ever, ever depend upon a program uh, to provide my, uh, my income for my business. Cause literally we were scrambling, man. It was tough. It was real tough. You know, you know what's and, funny, uh, Carl is so fish and I are big Facebook guys, big Facebook lead guys, Facebook ad guys, Facebook organic stuff. But we know, and I know, tons of people who are in the Facebook ad agency space, right? Yeah. And they're selling leads to loan officers and real estate agents. Well, these days, and, and, and I know you know this from, from your experience with it, you know, these agencies, they're getting shut down overnight with no, no rhyme or reason from Facebook. So all of a sudden it's just gone and it's two to three weeks to get, you know, to get these things turned back on. Yes, so, yeah. Uh, it's yes, same, thing. Back same thing that happened 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Yeah. It's happening in the Facebook world right now. So having it, it's it goes back to the you know, give a man a fish, teach a man a fish philosophy right there. And, and I think you know there's so many ways to generate leads. Buying them is just burning your own money. Yeah, I I I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think, you know, I think the um you know, you know, speaking of Facebook, uh, uh, you know, Facebook leads, which I, I'm a huge fan of, is where we can get our past database, upload that into uh, uh, Facebook and start running ads. And nobody sees it except our past database mm -hmm. and the kind of ads that we do that. And the kind of ads that we do uh, is where, um, you know, the same kind of stuff that you would post on Facebook, you know, cute picture at the title company, another closing on time by the, 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 the TJ team or, or, or the fish team, 
Uh, it's the same kind of stuff, except we, we post those on our, you know, via our business page on Facebook. And then we run ads to our past database. And another thing that we do is we get a list of all the, what I'm going to call qualified agents in our area. And for me, these are agents that are closing uh, six buyer sides or more per year. So every, in other words, almost once a month, and many of them three, four, five times a month, they have a buyer side that they close on. We get a list of all of those agents in my area. We upload those into Facebook and we start running ads to all of those agents, closing on time, cute picture at the title company, you know, the, the normal kind of stuff that we all post, except we're driving ads to it. And again, the only people that see that are going to be the people that we've uploaded that list to, which would be our past database, friends and family, and qualified real estate agents. And uh, man, that has worked out for us real good, especially when we combine that with, hey, when we see them at the title company, we see them at the open houses, uh, we make our phone calls and coffee meetings, maybe we teach a real estate office, that you, you just like you, you, like you two guys, you guys are celebrities in our industry. You can do that, everybody that's watching this today can do the exact same thing. It's just you get a list, you upload it to Facebook, you run Facebook ads to that list, and instantly, everybody's seeing you on the, the new TV screen, right? The new TV screen. And you're now a, a, a local celebrity, like, 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 like the weatherman or the yeah. local news reporter. It makes that Monday call a little bit easier, doesn't it? It makes that Monday call. Like, dude, and I say this with great humbleness and, and, and gratitude. I literally cannot make a cold call because, uh, you know, and just like you guys, you know, the, 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 everybody knows us, right? And so it'd be like, I'm not comparing myself to Oprah, but like Oprah – nationwide can't make a cold call. No such thing for Oprah because everybody knows her and, right. and, 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 and me fall in that category. Everybody loves her. And so you can do that for yourself very, very inexpensively. And as you're switching, as you're putting more energy into the purchase market, keep these kinds of things in mind. These are very easy to implement. Uh, the, the, the marketing ad, like if you upload, uh, say a thousand qualified agents in your area, uh, and run ads of that. I don't know. You guys probably know that better. Maybe fifty dollars a month. Maybe. I mean, this is yeah, three dollars a day. It's five dollars yeah. a day. Something like that. It just be on those people like white on rye, so that so that when they see you, it's like the it's like a local attorney that has their billboard every five feet on the on the highway. Uh, and your everybody knows that attorney. Everybody now knows you. Very effective. But I'm going to tell you, if you don't mix, it's my opinion. If you don't mix it up with the phone calls and actually doing some face to face with these people. Uh, it's, it's not going to work out so well. Yeah, that's been our experience um, with working with people that with, with the digital marketing aspect of it is the folks who really have success are the ones who utilize it as part of their prospecting mm -hmm. business as a way to accelerate the prospecting business. But the folks who try to replace it consistently fail because luckily, luckily for all of us, right, we're still in a relationship based business. Yeah. Uh, you know, so having those phone calls and be able to meet someone face to face, hopefully soon, you know, except for you in Florida where, you know, every, everything's wide open. Yeah. We fish never not, stopped. <laughs> yeah. So you're still, fish, fish goes on vacation there a lot. I think just so you can see people. Um, yeah. yeah, me, me, yeah. I'm an so I, I don't want to meet people. So I'm, I've, I've been loving this. Fish is like, we got an event. I'm like, sorry, man. COVID. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, TJ. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm what's called a, an extroverted introvert. I'm, I'm the same way, man. I, this has not been a bad year for me. Just, just being totally transparent. You know, I've done, obviously feel for people that's going through a hard time, right? We're not right. making fun of that, but it, it hasn't been a bad thing business wise, probably for any of us actually. Yep. So kind of going back to where we we're talking about this. So learn to generate your own leads. You know, learn to generate your own leads is a great way. And look, a lead's not just a Facebook lead or a Google ad or something like that. A lead is someone that you can have a sales conversation with. Realtor, divorce attorney, title company, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, cousin, something like that right there. You know, what else? Is there any other specific uh, you know, thoughts or, or um, concepts that, that loan officer, like the guy who came in, you know, took a job six months ago because someone was slammed. It's like, hey, I got 50 loans I need processed today. Now they're like, ah, eh, rates are going up a point and a half. I don't have much for you. Go out and get some business, right? Any, any other specific actionable, act, or actionable actions or <laughs> actions that you should take? We, we get a lot of that. TJ and I get a lot of that on MLO Net, a lot of that kind of person who, you know, is a quality person. They're a hard worker. They, they've really tried, but, you know, they've only been in the business a year and they've only seen 
that side of the market. The order taking. Mm -hmm. The last month, they're just like, oh my gosh, like there's all these things and all this stuff, and I don't know what to do. And 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 you know, what do we tell that person? So I would tell them a couple things. Number one, if you want to get that list of qualified agents and upload it into Facebook and then start calling on those, that definitely helps warm them up. But like if you were to say, all right, Carl, I got to move, uh, we're going to move you to, I don't know, pick in uh, Oklahoma City. I just grabbed a place, Oklahoma City. And you can't use any of your influence. And within 90 days, you have to have 20 loans active, you know, heading to close. What would you do? So what I would do, which is exactly what I do. Oh, have you been watching our success series calls? Have you ever seen one of them? You know, if I can be, I, I have not. On every call. What you just did is exactly what we do at the end of the call. <laughs> hey, that's, how, that's how karma works, man. I'm, I, I'm a karma guy. That's how karma So I literally didn't know that. So, uh, so what I would do is, man, I'd get the list of qualified agents, uh, which by the way, there's a, well, we'll get into that if we have time. Uh, there's a, a place where you can get that list. But, but you know, you can get that list from uh, uh, another place. You can get the list for free from uh, like any MLS. Like mm -hmm. ask your favorite realtor, title company, uh, appraiser. They have access to MLS. Ask them for a list of all the agents that closed eight buyer sites more in the last 12 months. There's a paid service where you can get it, but you can get it for free just by asking a, a friendly face. I'd get a copy of that list. I'd upload it into Facebook, and I'd start running my ads to them at, say, literally $50 a month as a budget. Then the next thing I would do, or, or as I was setting all that up, I would, I would pick up the call and man, pick up the phone. And man, the simplest conversation I've ever had, which is just being honest, it's how Mike, it's how you and I hooked up with each other here just recently. Like we've all, we've been fans, uh, uh, you know, the three of us have been fans of each other for, for a long time, but where, you know, we got reconnected here just recently is a classic script. And it's, uh, Hey Mike, uh, my name is Carl White. So we're going to talk as a realtor. Hey realtor Mike, my name is Carl White. I'm over here at carlsmortgagecompany.com. And uh, man, I just want to be perfectly transparent. I, I got a list of some of the top producing agents here in this area. And I saw your name on that top of that list. And, and I've heard your name around town a little bit. And man, I'd love to treat you to a cup of coffee. Uh, so you can tell me more about uh, some of the, how, how, do you, how, do, how do you make this happen? Like, why is everybody talking about you all the time? So the basic script is, I think you're awesome. I'd like to treat you to a cup of coffee so you can tell me more about how awesome you are. It's a great script. I mean, it sounds very simple, but it's great script because if you call me up, say, hey, Carl, would like to talk to you so you can tell, tell us more about you. Dude, that's my favorite subject. <laughs> it's just being honest, along with everybody else's. And using that simple script will get you talking with people but understand that while that script will get you on the phone with people and when you have that conversation with them, don't tell them about how you're going to build their business. Don't tell, nothing wrong with doing that stuff, by the way, but you got on that call by saying, Hey, I want to hear more about you. Don't change the subject. When you get on the phone with them, talk about them, ask questions, shut up and listen. You know, the old frog family, recreation, occupation goals. How's the family? I don't, which I don't start with that. I don't go right into the family. So it's family, recreation, occupation. Goals. I, I talk about the job first. Tell me a little bit about your job. Like how, how'd you get started? What does your team look like? If you were to make a recommendation for me on, on building a team, what would, you know, what would you do first? Uh, what's your favorite part? What's your least favorite part? If there's one part you could eliminate, what would that be? Just ask questions. Right. And, and then, and then you go to the recreation. Well, gee, that sounds awesome. Uh, uh, it's easy to see why you do so well at work. How do you recharge your batteries? Like what do you, what do you do on time off? That's, that's recreation. And then we go into family, which you got to be careful of, right? You don't be weird on this part. So TJ, man, that, that sounds awesome. So, uh, so when you go skiing, like, like, do you go with your buddies? You go by yourself, you take family. What does that look like? And now you're going to tell me about family, right? And, uh, and then when we finish that call, TJ, man, it's easy to see why everybody, uh, thinks so highly of you. Man, if I could hit the universe reset button and only work with agents like you, dude, I'd be in loan officer heaven. Uh, TJ, is there anybody you'll work with now that I could help you with? Anybody? And if they say yes, awesome. If they say no, totally cool. Say, hey, I, I get it. Well, hey, brother, could I count on you to give me a call the next time you have a buyer lead? I'd, I'd love the chance to work with you. Not I want to work your deals. Not I want to build your business. I want to work with you. Make it personal, right? Make it personal. And we find that when you call 30 agents, You'll, uh, you'll end up having coffee with about 14 of them. Of the 14 you meet with, you'll end up working with about four, about, uh, about four of them. You'll start working uh, business. So if I was just getting started, within a very short period of time, pick a list of 30. I'm going to meet with 14 of them. I'll end up working with four. Nice and simple and easy. And then just repeat that process.
Now, Carl, I'm going to kind of throw a tough one at you. You and I just did a podcast, and I'll put the link to it here. I really enjoyed it. I listened to it over over three or four times. And was, Me too. I, see, I thought I was weird. I, I listened to it over and over too. So I'm, I'm glad you fessed, I'm glad yeah. you fessed up first. Yeah, no, it was good, man. And um, uh, one of the things we talked about on that podcast was, you know, loan officers hating and loan officers spending all their time being negative and not having a good mindset and stuff like that. What do you say to LOs that, you know, you've given this kind of plan to, and they they still, you know, like, like oh, man, that doesn't work, Carl. So just call these agents on Monday and coffee. You know, that's all outdated. I mean, we still see that stuff bouncing around and people – being lazy or having bad negative habits. I mean, what would you say to people like that? You know, uh, the world needs ditch diggers too, you know? <laughs> hey, just being honest, right? Not everybody's destined for success. It's a choice. And uh, I know uh, uh, me and my team, we closed 1.7 billion with a B dollars uh, last year. We averaged between 650 and 800 loans per month. And so somebody tells me, hey, this doesn't work, you know, I, I guarantee nobody closing more loans than me will tell me this doesn't work, right? It's, it's uh, you, you know, usually it's, it, you know, when people say that, what it really is is fear or, or I'm not worthy of great business. Like somehow, and I don't mean to get too woo-woo here, but somewhere, somewhere down the line, somebody told that person, or they had the belief that I'm destined to struggle my life and, and I've got nothing to bring to the table. If I, you know, if I talk to a great like TJ or to a fish, uh, th these guys wouldn't want to talk to me because, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not up to their level. Who am I to talk to people like this? All that crap that's going on in their head. And, uh, man, I, I call like, that. I don't know my products enough. You know, I'm worried because I'm not a good enough. Dude, I don't know products at all. Just FYI. So I, I've lived, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I've literally, like literally, uh, I've never, I've never ran DU. I've never done LP. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know the login. I don't even know how never done it. Not one time. And my own personal production, uh, uh, when I, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm a non-producing branch manager now. When I was a producing branch manager, my own personal production, I ran about probably a slow month was 50 loans a month. Uh, my best month ever of personal production was 72 loans a month. I've never, never, gone online to, to lock a loan or ran DU or LP. I never had all the answers, but I knew who did. I focused on the relationship part. So the, if, if in your, somebody, if, if your brain is telling you, Hey, as soon as I know all this information, then I can go out. Man, that's just absolute crap. You, as long as your answer is, you know, I'm not sure, but Diane back in the office, uh, let me give her a call. We call her radar in the office. She always knows all the answers somehow or another. Uh, let's give radar a call and find out. Totally cool. Nobody says, well, you don't know the answer to this. I never want to do business with you again. Like as long as I'm asking them about their business and talking to them about their business um, and find people that I genuinely like, like you guys, like I, I you know, I, you, you guys are, are generally like really super nice people and we get along just fine. We happen to be doing some work together, but, but we genuinely like each other, you know, at some level already. And when we, when we circle ourselves around with uh, referral partners that we genuinely like and not trying to, force a hundred percent of the people to be working with us. I find as a general rule, about 25% of the people I, I, I get a mesh with, you know, like it, like, like it's going to be really good. And so my goal in life is to find my 25% just as fast as I possibly can. So if I moved into Oklahoma city, I'm looking for the 25% that I'd, that, that I'd end up having a barbecue anyway. I just happen to be a, a lender. They happen to be a real estate agent. We happen to be working together. Who's my 25%. So for me, man, it's all about a frog kissing contest. You know, it's just kissing frogs to find out who my uh, princesses or, or, or prince, whatever the case may be, uh, find out who those people are. And it's just simple scripts. It's just getting out there and doing it. And it's getting away from putting out the fires and chasing conditions and looking for page three of the bank statement. Get away from that kind of stuff so I can focus on actually a business. We have to ask ourselves, do we have a business here or are we working on a job? And I get it. I might not have ownership in my company, which I don't I have zero ownership in the company, but it's still my business, just like everybody else that's on this call. You, you might work for Wells Fargo, Bank of America, or, or whoever, you know, Fred's Bank, whoever, Susan's Bank, whoever. It's still your business and treat it like a business and not like a job. The day that you, the day I changed, we all, the three of us changed our thought. We're running a business, not a job. Man, that's a game changer. I'm just telling you, Every, everything changes at that point. Yep. Hey, Carl, real quick, I want to circle back to the phone calls because, you know, and, and Fish brought it up. A lot of people say it's antiquated, it's outdated, even though it's funny. 
you know, Fisher and I have had the opportunity to learn and engage with a lot of high producing loan officers over the last three years. A lot of them have something in common, right? And, and it's, it's those, those blocking those time blocks that you talked about, yeah. daily prospecting, making the calls, reaching out to people they don't know to continue to in, build their influence. Um, a lot of us, and myself included, really suffer from call reluctance, right? I, I know, you know, uh, you know, the different programs I've been a part of over the years, yours, the core, the different ones, you know, I, I would start off every Thursday, I'd start building my list, prepping my scripts, practicing, uploading my data into phone burner. Monday, I'd find a reason not to make the calls. I'll do it tomorrow. Tuesday, I'd make the calls. Wednesday, I'd start the process over again, right? I think that's a huge thing. I think part of what you spoke about with up creating your Facebook ad, your billboard targeting the agents can help you out because it just gives that little mental trick that these people know who I am. But is there anything, I know you have a book on call reluctance. Is there any one thing that you can tell someone that's watching this right now? It's like, I, I got to feed my family. I got to make these calls. I got to stop prospecting to just get them over that hump and have them pick up the phone and start, make, and start dialing. So here's the thing. Everybody has call reluctance right? Me too. I had, dude, right before we click the, the, the play button on here, I'm, I'm sitting here anxious, right? I'm nervous. Like I, I, I hope I help. I hope I, I hope I'm bringing, you know, some, some good information that'll help somebody. Right. And, you know, I've done this as you have uh, thousands, literally thousands of times. And every single time I'm nervous, every time I pick up the phone call, I'm, I'm nervous, right? Every single time. And there's a thing that we talk about is fear is peeing in your pants. Courage is doing what you need to do with wet pants on. And, and, and what that means is everybody feels fear. Everybody. It's just those that succeed, you know, do it with wet pants. They, they push through that fear and do it anyway. And so understand that confidence only happens after we do something, not before. Like, I'm not going to be confident about, you know, being honored to be here on y'all's uh, program here until after we finish. Then I'm going to go, okay, I think that went pretty good, right? I think that went all right. I think it was helpful. And, uh, but that thought won't pass my mind until once we're done. So I never feel confident about a call until after, after I finish the call. So don't wait for the confidence, just do it anyway. So basically feel, feel the fear, do it anyway. And, uh, the, our running joke is, uh, uh, wear black pants, right? Wear black <laughs> pants is, is a running joke. And, and I just want to clarify something. I agree with that. Uh, Angela made a great point about, Hey, um, understand that just because somebody's not successful in this, right? It doesn't mean they're not successful at something. Find out what that is. So if somebody finds out, hey, you know what? I, I don't want to sell, right? I, 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 that's, not, that's not what I'm dusting for. Awesome. Go do something else, right? Just find out what that thing is. But before you give this up, give it like 30 days of trying it this way. Give it, I always say, dude, you give me 30 days, and if your life literally isn't changed, go do something else, right? But it's, it's, it's life-changing when, when, when you, you look, when you close more loans, you make more money. It's not the extra money. It's what you can do with that money. Like, like, like some of the things we do with, we have, we have uh, over here and I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this to inspire people. We have it. We, uh, uh, we have scholarships programs for kids that otherwise couldn't go to college. Me, the lovely Mrs. White and, and through our organization with the marketing animals, uh, we send kids to college. We just opened up a, uh, a center for uh, battered women in Cartagena, South America about a year ago, changing lives down there, right? So it's not just about buying more, you know, another Rolls Royce per se, nothing wrong with that, right? Nothing wrong with that, but that's not what it's about. It's all the things that you can bring. Uh, we just adopted a family that lives about a, it's a single mother. She just got her, uh, her nursing license. She has four kids. Uh, my God, I don't know how she can afford to do it. She, she needs some help. So, uh, you know, so we're, and again, just out of, out of inspiration, we're helping, uh, we're helping her uh, get a home uh, so she can raise her family in. And so when you, when, you, when, you, when you make this extra money, one of the reasons is, hey, you might want to go buy a Ferrari. And another reason is, hey, go help some people, right? Make a difference. And, and all these families that you're helping getting the homes and uh, when you're farming, you're refinance, you're putting them in a better situation, maybe lowering their debt to income ratio so they'll have less arguments with the, uh, you know, uh, uh, marital arguments because money's the number one reason for a divorce. If you can help people with those situations, man, that's awesome. So, uh, so understand that there's a huge reward for picking up the phone, uh, but then there's also, as there's opposite and equal reaction, there's a hesitation to it too. Push through that hesitation, go help some people. That's awesome. 
Cool. Hey, you mentioned it um, kind of as we were chatting, and I know you didn't come on here to do it, but, you know, tell us, tell MLO Net about your different programs, Marketing Animals, Freedom Club, all the great stuff that you got going on, which is really built to help loan officers succeed. Well, uh, you know, just for time, if, if you'd like, if, you know, if something I said interests you and you'd like to have a, a chat, maybe map out like a, like a, a, a hey, what would a good 90 day uh, map out look like? We're happy to do that. If you just go to loanofficerstrategycall.com, loanofficerstrategycall.com would be more than happy to, uh, uh, to map out the next 90 days of, of what that would look like. We can share some scripts or like what'll happen when you go there, it'll ask you a couple questions like what are you doing and what's working now and what are you struggling with? And then we'll, we'll put together a plan uh, that we'll give to you. You can have it. Uh, and, and you know what? We'll, we're happy to anybody like totally for free. If you want a copy of the, of the call reluctance book. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I don't know how we'd do that. I'll, I'll, get, I'll give you guys, I'll, I'll ship you out a case of them. Y'all can give them away or we can put a link on your page or whatever, whatever you guys, however you guys want to handle that. We'll be happy to, or if you, if you schedule one of the strategy calls, if you just tell us, Hey, I like a, a copy of the uh, call reluctance book. I'm happy, happy to give that out. I'm just absolutely honored to help. So you guys are really cool, man. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. We truly appreciate it. Fish, I want to shut up. You've actually let me get some talking in this time because again, you know, when one of my, one of my heroes jumps on here, I like to engage with them. So, um, and Carl, I'm talking about fish. He's my hero. Um, but, <laughs> so, I mean, go ahead and wrap us up. Anything else for Carl? Carl? Well, I would just say if you guys are in the podcast, jump over and, and catch the podcast. Um, I, I'm probably going to screw up the name. It's just basically the, it's the marketing animals podcast. It's a uh, loan officer freedom. Cause what, what we yeah. focus on is how to treat like a business, not a job and, and getting out of the, the day to day chasing bank statements. And, and, and instead of chasing pay stub number three, uh, spend that same energy growing your business, uh, which is where freedom is truly found and getting away from the, you know, for the, the 60 hours a week or 50 hours a week and, we uh, our, our structure is a 32 hour based work week and uh, it's just about freedom and helping other people achieve their freedom too. You know, it's not just a selfish thing. It's a, it's a giving away thing too. So loan officer freedom, uh, dot com is the name of the podcast. And if you go to the, uh, I think it's the, uh, the, the episode we did, Mike, I think is like, uh, Two down, like I, I don't think it's a. But we've had a couple well, since then. The comments here, but yeah, a couple down. Yeah. There. So cool. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. You, you just, just, the last shout out I want to give here, you know, again, thank you for your time and, and thank you for your contributions to the industry, but it just thank you at a high level for, for having that giving mindset. You know, a lot of folks in the industry see mortgage coaches and teachers and trainers and leaders and all that. And they, all they seem to think is all oh, that person is trying to hire me or make money off me or whatever. They don't see all the things that you do for free or that you give back. And that really resonates with me because I spent a lot of years just trying to help people and try to give and, and even on this call, you mentioned a whole bunch of times just trying to give, trying to help people. And, you know, you put stuff out there. It, at some point, you got to tell people, you got to remind them, hey, I do business. You know, I run a mortgage company. I write loans. You know, I'd like you to be part of that. That's just, that goes along with being a mortgage coach. That's how you would get paid for all your time and energy at some point, right? But there's plenty of stuff out there. There's books. There's all kinds of stuff for the people who aren't at that level to commit. And even, you know, TJ started the call saying he called you once and he was in a dark spot and you said, man, here's a bunch of free resources. I don't want to take your last $300. That's not what we're about. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, and, and you know I, I mean, for me, the, so I belong to mastermind groups myself that I'm paying member of. Like I pay mm -hmm. literally over a hundred thousand dollars a year uh, to belong to mastermind groups. And what I find is when I do that, I've got some skin in the game, mm -hmm. dude, I'm in. So, you know, the, the, the worst, the worst group I belong to is free because I got no skin in the game. Right. And don't get me wrong. I have free groups as you guys do it. And you have an awesome source. I'm not I'm not against the free groups. What I'm saying is when you put skin in the game to something, man, that changes everything. Now, now you're in. And, yeah. and I find uh, when I do nothing but just simply write a check, like it's one thing for me to say, uh, Hey, hey fish, man, I'd like you to hold me accountable. And you go, awesome girl. I'll help you do that. It's another thing to say, uh, a fish, I'm going to pay you uh, uh, $2,000 a month to hold me accountable. Brother, now it's serious. Now, now I'm going to do it. And I, I'm not worried about that $2,000 I'm paying you because I'm, I'm paying you $2,000, but that accountability is now making me $20,000, right? I'm writing an extra, say, six loans or seven loans or 10 loans a month because I have this accountability that I'm going to take these actions. That's a game changer. So it's one thing to say, hey, 
uh, you got my back on this. It's another to say, I'm going to pay you to have my back because now I'll be darned if I'm going to pay you $2,000 and not do what you tell me to do. You know, so it's just a, it's just, a, it's just a game changer. So, uh, so anyway, so cool. So yeah, we, we, we appreciate that. And, and, you know, there's, there's folks at all levels in the industry and I'm kind of looking back at this call right now. I'm thinking you probably gave some great tips for pretty much everybody at any level. So that's, that's uh, really awesome. We appreciate it. You're welcome to, you know, jump in MLO net and contribute and do kind of as you've been doing and hopefully get a chance to, to talk more soon. And maybe one of these days we'll see each other face to face a live event. I, I'd, I'd be honored, and then, uh, man, next time, uh, yeah, I, I, I'd be honored. And, dude, I, I log on to your group all the time, man. I, there's a lot of good stuff goes on in this group, a lot of good advice and uh, a lot of good l little uh, tricks and, and tips and stuff. Uh, you guys have put together an amazing community of, of, of givers uh, and, and thinkers, and uh, it's really cool to be a part of that, and I, I appreciate, uh, appreciate the invite here today. You guys are an absolute class act. Appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the favor. Let us know. I, I, that I will. All right, I ended the live, I think.